Today, I am recording my Aetheray videos for build 26. I'm going to be covering in not one, not two, not even three, in four videos what the Aetheray is in this current build of Grim Dawn. I hit the level cap the other day and I fully fleshed out the character as a pure arcanist, but what I'm going to be doing in, in this set of videos is I'm going to be covering first in this one the itemization. In the next one I'm going to be covering a pure arcanist version and the video after that is going to be a sorcerer which is an arcanist demolitionist and in the last video I'm going to cover a warlock which is an arcanist occultist. This video and all of the others are going to start from nothing. I'm going to I'm going to assume that I have not made a ton of Aether Ray videos before. And I'm going to assume anyone stumbling upon these or finding these is totally and completely new to what's going on with this build. So I am going to be covering everything from nothing, bare bones nothingness, to the fully fleshed out character. And today we're going to start with the items. And these items cover all of the builds more or less. Um, there may be a few things I would switch out depending on what the individual combination of things would be, but for the most part, all of these items apply to all of the builds because they're the general Aether Ray items. So first off, we're going to start with weapons. And the first that you're probably going to have drop, because it's a 35, is the Blackwood Wand. The Blackwood Wand is a spellcaster weapon and its base damage is aether damage instead of physical. And it has additional aether damage, spirit, plus one to all skills in occultist, and plus one to all skills in arcanist. This is a great starter wand for anyone using aether damage, but also it's not a bad wand if you're just using, like, the arcanist. Because you'll end up with plus one to all arcana skills. And the damage it provides is in line with a lot of the arcanist abilities, specifically... Kaladur's Tempest, Albrecht's Aether Ray, and two of the Panetti's Replicating Missile variations. Of course, if you're building for something that isn't Aether, you probably would want to avoid this wand. But for the most part, it's a great starter wand for an Aether-based build. The component you're going to want to apply to it is the Wrath Stone. And the Wrath Stone is 11 to 13 Aether damage, 25% to Aether damage, and then a completion bonus. And in the case of my Blackwood Wand, I have Fire Damage, which is actually not bad, given that the Aether Ray is split between Aether and Fire. The second item you'll probably encounter is Devil's Bargain. And you can get this from the Respected level. Wait, it is Respected, right? <laughs> I'm right here, I can just go over and look. Yes, or no, the um, Honored level, De uh, Devil's Crossing Quartermaster. Devil's Bargain is a, it's a sword, so it's a physical weapon, uh, but it has flat aether damage, energy leech, percent aether damage, spirit, and casting speed, along with the granted skill of Arcane Blast. Arcane Blast is 10% chance when hit by melee attacks, you'll, you'll explode basically, and deal a chunk of aether damage. Um, it's a, it's a pretty good weapon, and it's about comparable to the Blackwood Wand. Now, with the Blackwood Wand, you have plus one to all skills, which is effectively plus one to your casting speed and skill cost reduction, plus one to your aether damage and energy leech, and plus one to your spirit and offensive ability, in addition to being plus one to all your other abilities. So what this means is, um, you do trade a lot of that for what this sword offers, but if you actually can't get a Blackwood Wand, this is completely and legitimately an alternative for that. Again, throw in a Wrath Stone and you're good to go. For the Augments, I'm going to be covering those uh, near the end of this. Because there, there are a couple, I have to actually run around and point them out. <laughs> so uh, for now, I'm just going to cover components on top of the items. Now when you cross the 40 barrier, um, there are three items you can look for. The first is Defiance, and this is another physical based weapon. It has extra physical damage, Aether damage, Flat Chaos Damage, Percent Aether, Percent Chaos, Health, and Defensive Ability, along with the granted skill of Aether Ward, which is sort of like 
when you're hit by an attack, you have a, a chance to gain this huge um, defensive bonus. And again, you would throw a Wrath Stone on it. Defiance, I think, is more for if you're using Kelidor's Tempest, or if you're doing a weird combination of warlocky things, maybe. Um, or if you're actually crossing over with um, the Soldier to do a Battle Mage. I think Defiance would be the way to go for the mix of Aether and Physical it provides. But it could also be for a, um, a Witchblade. For a soldier occultist, this weapon could also work because of the physical and chaos damage. All in all, it's more of a tanky weapon. It's more, it is more for your spellcaster that engages in much more close range combat than what the Aether Ray provides. But again, I think it would probably be about comparable to, um, actually probably a little better than Devil's Bargain. The last weapon, or no, um, the next weapon is. I'm going to stick with melee for now, is the Immaterial Edge. And this is probably the current best in slot for an Aether Ray build. Because it has flat Aether damage, percent Aether damage, bonus damage against Chithonics, Spirit, Energy Regen, and plus one to all skills in Arcanist. This provides all of the same bonuses the Blackwood Wand provides with the percent Aether damage on it. And that's the big thing here, is this provides percent Aether damage on top of the flat Aether damage. This means that that 52% Aether damage is actually going to be applied to both your flat Aether damage that you deal um, as part of your weapon damage, but also to the also to the ray. And if we switch out, I mean, I'm going to lose my aura, so it's going to be a bigger switch than it normally would be. Um, we have a significant change in the percent Aether damage. And again, throw in a Wrath Stone for that Aether Damage and Percent Aether Damage, and for Aether Aura. Actually, I forgot to mention, Aether Aura is what you get from the Wrath Stone, and it's a, it is a, um, a passive that you activate, it reserves energy, and you deal more Aether Damage, both Percent and Flat, and you have a tiny chance of a tiny amount of Aether Retaliation, but the, the Retaliation is, is very, like, actually, it's not even, it's not even listed here with the Aura up. But anyways, it's it's such a tiny amount of retaliation, it's almost it's almost pointless to mention it. And it's such a slim chance of it happening. Um that it it's actually very rare for you to get a benefit off of that small bit of retaliation, but I mean damage is damage. And then finally the last weapon, which I think I'm gonna use for the sorcerer variation to try it out, is the Soul Flare Pistol. And the Soul Flare provides flat aether damage, percent aether damage, it converts some physical damage to aether damage. It has spirit, energy regen, and casting speed. It's about equivalent to Devil's Bargain-ish, maybe Defiance, like, except it's also ranged. It has the granted skill of Aether Missiles, which is 5% on attack. You'll fire out three projectiles, sort of in a fan of projectiles. And then, for this you can't equip a Wrath Stone. So you have to go with the Aether Steel Bolts, which are flat Aether damage, percent Aether damage, a completion bonus, and they give you the granted skill, Aetheral Tendril, which um, I believe is the uh, the attack that um, Aether Crystals use against you. I haven't actually played with the Soul Flare a lot because I don't have the uh, cunning for it, but um, yeah, we're gonna we're definitely going to see what it is later on. So those are the weapon options for Albrex Aether Ray. Next up are the offhand options. Right now I'm using a Crushing Will. Crushing Will is flat elemental damage, percent elemental damage, spirit, energy regen, a huge chunk of casting speed, skill cooldown reduction, and plus one new Escondra's Elemental Exchange. Escondra's Elemental Exchange is an okay ability to have as an Arcanist. It's like extra tiny bits of damage rolled into your, into your attacks. It does help with your sheet DPS as well. Now, you may be wondering why am I not using an Aether and like a supremely aether based offhand and that's because crushing will elemental damage the elemental damage on crushing will will apply to the fire damage you have and that enhances your aether ray it also has that huge chunk of casting speed and because i'm using i can show this off i'm using calendar's tempest we can actually get that going extremely fast but also casting speed is actually rolled into the aether rays damage so having casting speed on some gear is actually not a bad thing, 
even though you will drain your energy a lot faster, you will actually deal damage faster with the ray as well. But also, casting speed takes... Casting speed determines how fast you actually shoot the ray and how fast you can turn the ray. So casting speed is actually not unimportant. I mean, I wouldn't call it necessary for Albrox Aether Ray, but it does help build up the ray and get it really, really going. There are, alterna there are alternatives to um, Crushing Will, and that includes from the Order of Death's Vigil Honored Level, Death's Ruin, which is flat Aether damage, bonus crit damage, a lot of bonus Aether damage, energy, energy regen, a lot of energy regen actually, and um, skill cooldown reduction. Now this doesn't, and it has Arcane Blast, which is 10% when hit by melee attacks, you'll explode. Which is actually quite the helpful ability. I'm kind of sad I don't really have it on anything right now. Because it's good to have, it's actually fun to have it and be hit by something and then just, it dies for it. Because it's actually a not insignificant amount of damage that Arcane Blast hits them with. Um, especially with your percent Aether on top of it. But anyways, Death's Ruin is a legitimate um, offhand to, to go with. Because it's, it's a lot of just flat, straight Aether damage. Personally, right now, I'm, I'm sticking with Crushing Will for that attack speed, but I may actually switch to Death's Ruin in the near future. Um, it depends on how... Um, it depends on if I, if I want to use a slower beam that uses less energy over time and have this absurd amount of, of energy regen, because I think this could better sustain the beam in the long run. Dementia is another option. It has cold damage, which is basically wasted on everything in this build, but it has percent aether damage, a lot of energy, some energy regen, cooldown reduction, and plus two to arcane will. Its granted skill is terror, 10% chance on hit, you'll terrify enemies for two to four seconds. This is okay for keeping things off of you, and it provides flat aether damage and energy for you to work with. No no casting speed though, and it's, and it's um, cold damage is wasted. Another legitimate option to go for with this build would be the three set or even just the two set for Myvins. And Myvins, you can use the hood and the offhand. You can use the offhand and the amulet. You can use the amulet and the hood, depending on what combination of things you want to go for. Because the two set will give you 20% aether damage. And then the three set will give you 22% elemental damage. And plus one to all arcana skills. So I actually think that's not a bad thing to consider going with. You do get you do get a lot of other small bonuses out of it. Specifically, you get energy regen on the amulet, some elemental resist and spirit, and you get the energy shield granted skill, which is actually a really handy thing to have. The hood has lightning, which is wasted, um, and some damage reflect, which isn't actually that bad, and then spirit and energy regen. The offhand, which has cold, which is totally wasted, but it has energy regen, energy casting speed, and cooldown reduction, all of which is completely fine. Um, and the 22% elemental damage applies 22% more damage to your fire, which is also a good bonus. And then it's it's 20% aether damage as well. So it's actually not a bad not a bad option if you don't have crushing will or any of the other items, because it's actually not that difficult to get. I, I've had a couple full Myvin sets drop over my history of playing the game, so it's actually not a, a terrible thing to maybe maybe consider. So we're going to move on to chest pieces, and chest pieces are, oddly enough, an open slot for this. The only requirement I would say to shoot for on your chest piece is to have it with flat energy regen and percent energy regen. That might be kind of tricky to get, but generally speaking, um, I do shoot for a chunk of my regen to be on my chest piece. In this case, I have consecrated guild investment of spell weaving because the, the spell weaving provides fire and vitality damage which actually both affect the beam because the fire comes from the main part. And Disintegration here has a tiny bit of vitality damage, which is enhanced by the vitality, the percent vitality damage provided by this. Not by a lot, but enough to make me use this over the other things I have. I will note, and we can run over to my stash real quick to look at some of these, there are prefixes and suffixes to go for for Albrex Aether Ray. Specifically, the suffix of Arcane Blaze which has percent fire and aether. Mine has a tiny bit of elemental damage because I crafted it with uh, Duncan the Blacksmith, and then its offensive ability and energy regen. I actually may switch to this robe, but because it, it lacks a prefix, it's actually going to be probably a worse choice. <laughs> the other one is 
um, of the Flesh Hulk, which is physical damage, aether damage, regen, all the regen, <laughs> and reduce stun duration. And then the Prefix, which I don't think I have anywhere, um, is Aether Fire, which is very similar to Arcane Blaze. Only, I don't think it provides any... I, it might provide Arcane Blast? I don't remember, though. But, uh, obviously, if I could, I would love an Aether Fire chest piece of Arcane Blaze. Um, but I, I seriously doubt that even exists. <laughs> and if it does, it's probably on one person's, um... <laughs> it's probably on one person's account somewhere. Who's never gonna see this video. <laughs> and would be unwilling to trade it to me. So anyways, um, yeah, chest piece, just go for regen, and you should be fine. Um, oh, the components on the offhands. I forgot, the components on the offhands. Blessed Steel for elemental damage, and for offensive ability. Mine just happened to have Aether damage, which was, which was great for that. The Radiant Gem works for its tiny bit of elemental things it provides, but mostly for the Radiant Shield ability, which is a handy, a handy way to build up your resistances. You could also use a Hollowed Fang for the Vitality damage to apply to Disintegration, uh, Mark of Drieg, I don't quite know if it reduces Aether damage or Aether resistance. Um, but also you could use Haunted Steel, which um, provides vitality damage. Um, I don't know how much of the attack converted to health actually works, but uh, with the Ray, <coughs> excuse me, with the Ray or Calidor's Tempest, but it might it, it it's also an option. The chest piece options are pretty much Chains of Alaran or Hallowed Ground with plus one to all skills and Arcanist. Um, pants, I'm going to cover pants and boots at the same time because pants and boots are really an open slot. You can go with any pants and any boots. I would recommend um, the uh, the Hermit's Leg Guards are good, Mistwalker Leggings. Um, you could probably go for green pants and green boots. I have green boots on, they're Seraphim. Um... Seraphim Adepts Greaves. For components, I would definitely recommend Ancient Armor Plate on the legs with Energy Regen, and Mark of Mark of the Traveler or Mark of Mogdragon on the boots. For your shoulders, I think there are probably about three or four options. I'm using the Mantle of the Weeping Eye because it has flat percent Aether damage. Um, I don't really care what the Frostburn or Electrocute. Um, it has Spirit, Offensive Ability, Energy Regen, and plus... Plus one elemental awakening is wasted because that's a nightblade ability, but it has plus two to Iskander's elemental exchange, which is pretty handy. And then the component I went with is the mutated scales. Now I would also note the ascended shoulder pads that you can get from Cronley's gang are actually an option if they roll well. I've never actually had one roll with any sort of good prefixes or suffixes, um, and for the most part, uh, I think they'd be equipped more for looks than anything. I mean, because you, you basically become, you know, glowing aether guy with it. And I mean, with <laughs> with this axe, you, you become a ridiculously glowing aether guy with it. But for now, I'm going to I'm, I'm sticking with my mantle with the weeping eye just for its stats. Gloves, there are pretty much, there are three options, I would say. Uh, Rewari handguards are from Honored in the Rover's Camp. Because they have a good chunk of total damage. They have spirit, energy regen, casting speed. And 10% chance of 46 reduced offensive ability retaliation for 5 seconds, which is pretty handy, no pun intended. And then um, Soul's Touch are some low-level gloves that could drop that have flat Aether damage and percent Aether damage, with some Energy Leech Spirit plus one to Calidar's Tempest. And then Inscribed Bracers, which I think are sort of the straight upgrade to to Aether Soul to, to Soul's Touch. I mean, I would I would consider equipping these with those, and it'd be pretty fun. But um. I think the Inscribed Bracers are your straight upgrade to that, because they have flat and percent elemental damage, casting speed, skill disruption protection, and plus two to the Kalidor's Tempest. Oh, um, component on the shoulder would be Mutated Scales. I think it's pretty much the only option, because it's just a good chunk of health. That's just really handy to have when it, it gets processed through um, whatever percent health bonuses you might have floating around. But also 200 health on its own, 220 health on its own is not bad. Um, components on the gloves would be like Unholy Inscription, um, Restless Remains, Spellwoven Threads, um, and I think that would probably do it for that. So anyways, um, the accessories, your belt. There are two options for your belt, and that would be the, Harm the uh, Death's Cord from the Order of Death's Vigil. If you craft up a good one, you can end up with, with some good... 
uh, good stats on it. I have a harmonious one, so I have a lot of elemental damage, percent health, percent energy, offensive ability, energy regen, elemental resistance, slow resistance, and the belt always comes with plus one to Myvin Sphere of Protection, which is pretty handy to have, and its granted skills are Aether Ward. Your other option would be Frizzix Utility Pack, because of its, it's just got great, a great slew of bonuses for you, total damage, offensive ability, defensive ability, health regen, and energy regen. Components on the belt and the helmet are completely open. I would use them to shore up whatever resistances you need, and in this case I went with the anti-venom cell for some poison acid resistance, but also I need I needed a bit more physique, so I went with um, something with physique on it. Your, your metal, you could really go with anything. I have the combat medics mark. It has physique, energy regen, health regen, bleeding resistance, and um, the plus percent to shield damage blocked is completely wasted on this build because you can't use a shield you need a caster offhand but the granted skills and those those couple of stats are really handy to have um the component i went with is an aether soul and i think that's really the only component you can go with on your your metal i mean you might get you might get a little mileage out of an attuned lodestone but i i just went with the aether soul because it's flat aether damage even after it's kind of tweaked i still think it's a pretty good pretty good component to have um field medicine is quite handy when it procs because it procs off of your attacks rather than being hit um it, it procs quite a bit and it can actually help allay some of the health potion potion usage you might have and i think it's pretty much the reason i have like 390 potions floating around i mean that and being you know not bad at the game but uh for the amulet you could go with Myvins if you're going to three set Myvins. You could also go with, um, I believe it's Amulet of the Eye, is an elemental damage amulet. I don't have one on me to show off, but I do have one floating around. Um, and that'll hold you off, or, or a green or yellow amulet even, until you get to <laughs> Revered with the orders, Order of Death's Vigil, and you get the Pendant of Ubiquitous Wrath. Which is Aether Damage, Energy, Offensive Ability, Energy Absorption, Skill Cooldown Reduction, and plus two to Albrecht's Aether Ray. It, it is, all in all, probably the best amulet you're going to find for this particular build. It has everything you'd ever want in an amulet for this build. And I do highly recommend Order of Death's Vigil specifically for this amulet. Your rings, if you have one drop, the Aether Lord's Signet, I'm doubling up on them, is a great option. Because it also has everything you could ever want, except energy regen. Um, <laughs> for this build, it's Aether Damage, Spirit, Health, Energy, Aether Resistance, and plus two to Albrecht's Aether Ray. It also has two, in this case I have two um, chances to proc Arcane Blast, which is a great thing to have to just retaliate against things that dare hit you. And um, for your component and your amulet, I think the Arcane Lens over the Aether Soul is the strictly better option because the arcane lens provides a lot of elemental damage and it provides skill energy cost reduction which is great for your rings i would say mark of illusions um is pretty much the best option oh the other two rings um in devil's crossing when you hit revered there's a death's wrath seal and there's also an aether ring in the rovers um but Death's Wrath Seal, I think, is strictly the better option. So getting two of those until you get some Aether Lord Signets um, would probably be better. And uh, the Death's Wrath Seal has Flat Aether, Percent Aether, Energy Regen, Attack Speed, Casting Speed, and Damage Reflected. The other ring that's also just an option, maybe if you want to have one Aether Lord Signet in this ring, or Death Death's Wrath, it's very hard to say, or Devil's Wrath, sorry, Devil's Wrath Seal, um is the Lore Keeper's Band, which provides all of these caster benefits and plus two to inner focus, which is also more caster benefits. So those are those are your options for your rings. And finally, the helmet. Um, when you're when you're leveling up, you want to shoot for the Nether Crown. Because it's Aether it's it's percent Aether, percent element, energy regen, and plus one to all skills and arcanist. When you get it when you get past when you when you cap out, when you hit fifty um, you're going to want to shoot for a Spirit Weaver Circlet. I know, these two items look extremely dumb. I, I actually really dislike their looks. Um, and, and quite honestly, I would much, much prefer something like that to that. So, don't be surprised if I do 
a future video with this character, and I'm not actually wearing the circlet, even though it's strictly speaking one of the best in slot items for this build, just for the looks. But uh, anyways, this has um, vitality damage, which applies to your beam a little bit, but you're mostly wearing it for that percent aether damage, that huge amount of energy you get, the energy regen, the casting speed, the skill cooldown reduction, and the plus one to all arcana skills. I mean, it has plus one to all occultist skills as well. Um, and that's why I'm going to recover a warlock in the future. Um, near future. And for the component, I went with a runestone, which I think is one of the few, if maybe the only head oriented component. Oh, I think le leathery hide is the other one. I don't know if I have any floating around. Oh, there it is. Um, because it, it's elemental damage, armor, and elemental resist, which is all quite handy to have to build up protection and damage for yourself off of your headpiece. Um, so that, or you could use it, I, on my Nether Crown I had the Anti-Venom Solve to get some Poison Acid Resistance, but and, and to build Physique up and Cunning up a little bit, but yeah, I, I would recommend um, Runestone as an option. So that covers, I think, all of the items available to you in in the current build of the game for Albrox Aetherite. Oh, I want to do one word on components. So when you're starting out with components, I would shoot for the Corpse Fiend Tentacle, for its Aether damage and its Vitality damage. This will help you, if you get it on three pieces, you'll get 30% Aether damage, 30% Vitality damage out of it. So we're going to go to the Rovers. I don't actually remember what the Rovers have. <laughs> okay, so the Rovers have Arcavian Rose Powder, which has Elemental Damage and Energy Regen. And Energy Regen can be important for you, for, for your character. For your weapons and offhand, it's actually not a bad idea to go with the Trollwort Powder as an option because it gives you health and health regen and I think that about covers it for that part um, the the ring in here is the Rewari Wrath Seal which has aether damage and elemental damage and energy and some resistances and I oh yeah um Rewari's Wisdom if you get to revered with the rovers is actually an option because of its its elemental damage spirit energy and casting speed and I think that covers... Yep, that covers rovers. Okay, next up is Homestead. For Homestead, as a defensive option, you can go with the Der Dermapturin Chitin. Because of its armor and resistances and, and reduced stun duration. Or the Void the void Vine Powder for its fire damage early on. But later on, um, if you need the Physique, Mainer's Blessing is great for that because the stun duration doesn't matter for your attacks 17 physique is actually a really good chunk of physique so if you need physique to meet the requirements of gear um mainer's blessing actually works really well i was doing that before the the level cap was increased but um i would recommend solar radiance which i'm actually going to throw on my weapon right now because i didn't have it Solar Radiance um, is great because it adds just a ton of fire damage on, which obviously helps your Aether Ray. For the or Order of Death's Vigil, I don't remember if they... No, they don't really have anything in um, Respected, but in, in Revered, you definitely want to go for Ouroboruch's Path 1. Because it's percent aether damage, energy, and energy regen. And I have that on all of my... All three of my um, pieces of bling. And I'm running the uh, the one from Homestead on my main hand and off hand. Because they're just great. Great amounts of fire damage. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to cover is potential items in the future. The first of which is under the Black Legion Quartermaster's um, respected level, and that is the Aether Dust. Because <laughs> it's just Aether related, um, an Aether related augment. We obviously can't get to this now unless we cheat. Um, and I'm not cheating this character. So, Aether Dust is, is basically. <laughs> Aether Dust is basically going to be a great option. Um, in the future, I'm not actually going to use it, but. If I were starting this character from nothing, I would consider it an option. Um, for the gear under Honored, there's the Aether, the Legion Aether Spark, which is percent Aether, percent Elemental, Energy, Energy Gen, and Casting Speed, along with Arcane Blast, on attack. 
and that may make me pick this weapon up because having an arcane blast on attack it, it it sounds like it might be an awesome thing to have because you'll just sit there like beaming and then all of a sudden you explode around you and it could be a great option for the aether ray it also has the legion mantle which may be the preferred maybe maybe a preferred option over the mantle of the weeping eye because of the aether damage and energy regen like the aether damage is lower but it also has resistances which are great for helping you know not die specifically has chaos resistance which you may notice i have zero of right now and i think that's kind of a hindrance for the later parts of act three similarly the legion vestments may also be a great option for your chest piece because they have that chunk of um, energy regen I mentioned, but they also have that percent aether damage, some offensive ability, which is great for getting crits, and then resistances, which is always handy to have. So legion vestments and the legion mantle are options potentially in the future. Finally, mercifully, we're at the end, and there's the aether storm powder, which is 20% aether damage, and some less damage from aetherials and aether corruptions. That lightning damage is basically wasted, but it may be the replacement for the fire damage on here. But I emphasize maybe. There's also a metal in here that I don't know if I'm going to quite use, but it also may be an option because it's percent aether, percent elemental, energy, offensive ability, and energy regen. Plus two to Panetti's replicating missile may be wasted with this build, but it might be the metal to go with, even above combat medic's mark. So it's a potential thing to use in the future. So that covers all of the items that that have a place in an Albrecht's Aether Ray build. In the next video I'm gonna be covering the what I'm what I'm currently using is the pure arcanist version of the build. So I'll see you guys then. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next Aether video. Again.